Hey guys, Thing Fishy here. So make your character, choose the Prophet starting class, and grab a golden seed as the starting gift. Welcome to build guide number 11. And for this one, I set myself a little challenge. Beat Elden Ring using only lightning incantations. If you enjoy this video and find it useful, give it a like and subscribe to my channel for more Elden Ring build guides. If there's a specific build you'd like to see me cover, let me know in the comments. So let's talk about setup. As usual, I followed my standard setup route. Link to the full video and play along guide in the description. Now happily, you don't have to do much of it. Just grab the golden seeds, sacred tears, and the first three somber stones. Don't worry about doing early volcano mana either, as we're going there fairly early on anyway. The only extra thing that you need to do during the setup is drop down the cliffs to the southeast of the Church of Pilgrimage in Weeping Peninsula to grab the Faith Knot tier. So we pick up the action here at Lena's Rise in Caelid. Make it nighttime, then jump onto the side of the bridge to bait the Night Cavalry into yeeting himself off. Then head to Fort Farrath to kill Grail with the Morning Star and the Bleed Grease. You need Radagon's Saw Seal to use the Morning Star. Rebuff with Bleed Grease halfway through and pop a pickled foul foot as Grail dies. Now, usually we don't level Vigor early on on a ranged build, but we're going to be using a couple of items that make us take more damage on this run, so we're gonna need it. Now head to the Outer Plateau and ride all the way to the Bridge of Inequity Grace. Through the battlefield and grab Golden Vow in the shack. Now head up Mount Gelmir towards Volcano Manor. Feel free to do Raya's questline to get here instead. Speak to Tanith and head into the dungeon. Now first up, we're gonna grab our main weapon for the run. Jump down this building through the gate and past the Omen Killer to grab the Ur Tree Seal from this cell. Then through the rest of the dungeon to grab the Somber Six on this roof, then up the lift to grab the Somber Five on this ledge. Then open up the shortcut for later on. Now head back to the third church in Limgrave and ride south to the lift, then down to Sifra. Ride to the Archer area and head northeast to the Broken Pillar then use the teleporter on top of it. Then around the edge of the cliffs, keeping as far away from the Dragonkin soldier as possible, to grab Marika's Scar Seal under the waterfall. Then head to the Putrefied Ruins in Leonia. I know they're actually the Purified Ruins, but after 10 guides it feels like tradition at this point. Head to Eiji and level up your seal to plus 6. Now for our spells. Walk back to the Castle Morn Rampart Grace in Weeping Peninsula and ride west. Equip the Ur Tree Seal and the Two Finger Heirloom to meet its requirements. Keep heading west until you drop down onto these stones. Then kill this little fella with the single non-lightning incantation that we'll use in this playthrough. Now walk back to Leonia and ride north up the eastern coast until you get to the Artist Shack. Check out the painting Equip Golden Vow and Lightning Strike, then ride around kiting this knight for the prayer book that he carries. Take this back to the round table to Corin. Pop some runes and buy a Lightning Spear. For our final bit of setup, head to the Bellum Highway, memorize Lightning Spear, and head up through the Madness area and drop down by the Minor Ur Tree. Spam lightning at the avatar from a distance to get the lightning shrouding crack tier. Now it's time for Margit. Pop runes to get one more level, equip the lightning and faith tiers, and use golden vow before you go in. Now if you've played any of the other Souls games, you already know exactly what lightning spear is. It's nothing fancy, it's just a solid incantation. Great range, super respectable damage, and very importantly in Elden Ring, it doesn't trigger enemies and bosses to dodge on casting it the way that some other projectile spells do. 
so it's very usable for smaller enemies and bosses that move around a lot. Now head through Stormvale Castle. Are you, um, are you seeing this? Me running through Stormvale whilst not getting hit by anything else? Light the grace at the secluded cell, then head into Godric. Godric is a good opportunity to talk about charging Lightning Spear. Like lots of spells, you can increase the damage by sacrificing a bit of speed. Godric is slow and predictable enough to do this safely, but I didn't use this too much in this playthrough. The other thing that you can see here in contrast to the Margit fight where I was using more range is that I'm pretty much fighting Godric here how I would with a melee weapon. And that's something you can do with a lot of spells and it took me an embarrassingly long time to ever figure that out in Souls games. There's a few bosses that it's pretty useful for. Now head to Rhea Lucaria. Buff up outside the door and walk in Cast the wrong spell, then take a 3 ton wolf straight to the face. When you equip the right spell, Red Wolf isn't a problem. Stand just outside his melee range to cast and watch out for those projectiles. Now head around and up the ladder to the upper section of the debate parlour for the Radagon Icon Talisman. Now it's time to kill Loretta for some fashion and an ash of war, so head through Caria Manor. Loretta is fine. You can stay at a distance for the whole fight and only have to worry about her projectiles. Once she's dead, grab the grace in Rani's rise and then head east from her tower to drop down into this building to buy the Carian Retaliation Ash of War. Then, from Loretta's arena, out and around to the right, to the graveyards by the cliffs. Find the spot from the artist shack painting and grab some fashion. I nipped back to grab the Carian night trousers for this. Now for Renala. And usually I would avoid a casting battle with her, but we really need the levels. Lightning Spear's range and damage is good enough for this to not be too much of a headache. Head back to the round table to get the third talisman pouch from Enya, buy three stone sword keys, and then walk to the Ur Tree Gazing Hill in Altus. Then up past the Mariner to the Wyndham Catacombs. At this point, please use your 28k runes to level up your faith instead of taking them into this really dangerous one way trip catacombs and losing them like I did. Head through the dungeon all the way to this stone sword key gate to grab the lightning charm. Now head back to Volcano Manor and equip it in slot number three. Now the easiest way to beat Noble is by staying out of his melee range and using Karian Retaliation to parry his black flames whilst casting lightning spear. In phase two, you can continue to do the same and even get some cheeky free aim casts in on the rolling attack. Drop down to grab the golden rune 12 outside, then head through the rest of the dungeon to the stone sword key gate, then all the way down to grab the somber seven by the abductor. You can now upgrade your seal to plus nine. Now walk to the Outer's Plateau and over the battlefields to the Draconic Tree Sentinel. So for this fight I decided just to use my standard melee strategy, using parries for the jump attack. One parry will allow for two spears. If you want to take a more ranged approach, you can use Karian Retaliation to deal with the fireballs. As always for parrying strategies, you can check out my boss parry guides. Now head through Lindell, all the way to the Avenue Balcony Grace. 
knit back and kill the tree avatar for the Lord's room. Head up the dragon's wing to the next grace. And then from here, we're gonna jump off the balcony and down to this lightning knight. He has pretty massive lightning damage negation and his mate will spam arrows at you if you fight him outside. So lure him into the round table hold and spam lightning spear at him. Grab the stone gravel seal and some fashion. We're gonna use the stone gravel seal for the rest of the playthrough in our offhand to boost all of our lightning attacks. So time for Godfrey, who was the first boss of the game that I was super worried about, but he ended up being really, really easy. Keeping around this distance away from him seemed to make him super chill. I just hit him with lightning spears and he didn't really seem to care. And if you thought that looked easy, wait until you see this Morgoth fight. Yep, he will just stand there and take it. Now head back to the Church of the Plague in Kaelid for something I was certain got patched out a while back but apparently still works. Shout out to Blade and their working skips in 107 video for this. Run behind the church and jump off the cliff at this exact point. Delay your second jump for as long as possible to fall down as far away from the cliff as you can. When you die, you'll get an option to return to the stake of Marika. This will plonk you right outside Radan's arena. Now yes, this saves you a few minutes, but the main reason to do it is you get to fight Radan in the daytime, as you skip the normally required cutscene. Treat phase one the same as you would a melee fight and get stuck in with close range lightning spears through those scripted attacks. For phase two, just ride around taking in the scenery and chuck some spears at him for a very easy and epic looking Radan fight. While we're in Kaelid, head to Commander O'Neill. Now, while I don't think it's necessary for this build, you can actually do this next part right at the start of the game before Margit if you like. If you do want to do this, I'd highly suggest standing on one of these many raised areas around the arena and cheesing him from a distance. We don't need to do that at this level though, so you can just get stuck in. Now head to Gallery Shack, speak to him and quit out for an instant repair. Then go give the needle to Millicent and speak to her again at Gallery Shack. Now walk to the Erdtree Gazing Hill and ride into the Shaded Castle, up the ladder and along to the right for the Valkyrie's prosthesis. Head back to Millicent, hand it over and tell her how much you're looking forward to battling alongside her. It's a really good talisman. Now go back to Gallery Shack and give him a lightning spear to the face for the best faith talisman in the game. Big shout out to all of you beautiful questline nerds for informing me that it can be done this way. We did the whole questline to get this talisman on the last faith run. Head to the crater and down into... Yep, that still happens on every single run. Head down into the crater and through Nokron, lighting the Ancestral Woods Grace for later and heading into the Aqueduct for the Gargs. Lightning Spear is great here. The damage isn't too flashy, but you can keep out of their range and spam it for the whole fight. Now head back to Volcano Manor and to Rykard's Arena. Equip Radagon's Saw Seal, the Strength Physic, 
the lance in one hand and Serpent Hunter in the other, and Spam crouching L once at him. I hope no one's too disappointed in me for not using lightning spells for this. I'm pretty sure it would be mathematically possible with all blue flasks, no heals and no getting hit. But the thought of that was tedious enough to not inspire even a single attempt. Do let me know if any of you maniacs try it though. Now to the mountain tops and to Fire Giant. And I don't think this will be that bad. Right, it's okay, I've got him now. So long as he doesn't do that one attack where he spews breath out of his chest. Oh. Okay, so I can't really put my finger on exactly why this one was so tough. So it could have just been an off day for me. But this took ages. Phase one is very simple. Spears at the foot as usual. Phase two is a little more annoying as our damage sucks and we lack any method of staggering. While I was getting my head continually caved in, I tried lots of free aiming strats for the left arm and the eye, but eventually I settled on the simpler method of just casting from Torrent whilst behind him. Sticking behind him is important so that you don't get rolled on. Speak to Melina, burn the Erd tree, and run through Faram, picking up the ancient dragon prayer book in this room with all the beasts, all the way to the transept grace. Now for some bits and bobs. Head back to Kale at the Church of Ella for three pots and the crafting kit. Then to the Saint's Bridge for another pot from the merchant. Back to Leonia into the village of the Albanurix for some mushrooms, St. Trina's lilies, and the first half of the Dectus medallion, and a rare armor drop. Can't resist that. Now back to the artist's shack in Leonia and north to the Church of Vows for the best part of any run. Isn't it crazy that there are people out there who think that Elden Ring isn't game of the year? Imagine that. Speak to the big pop, give him the prayer book, and buy the two ancient dragon spells. Now head back to Limgrave and try out Lightning Strike on the Demi-Humans for the tailoring kit. Spend a few minutes settling on the strongest fashion, then head back to Faram for Godskin. Run in and put them both to sleep as close together as you can get them. And here's where we start to see how completely broken Ancient Dragon Lightning Strike is. On groups of enemies and larger enemies, it's one of the most powerful spells in the game, so Godskin really aren't a problem. Now head through the rest of the dungeon, running past the dragon for the ancient dragon stone, and up to the beside the great bridge grace. Since we did parry strats for the first one, I did the second draconic with a ranged approach. Just watch out for the fireballs and create some distance after he closes it. Now it's time for another fight that I was really worried about with this build. Beast clergyman is usually a nightmare with a ranged build but this was actually a first try. Our range is superior to his with Lightning Spear, so you can stand out of range of most of his projectiles and still hit him with yours. For Malaketh, I switched to the flashier Lightning Strike strat. While Godskin was a case of its strengths, Malaketh here begins to show its big weakness. This spell's a little inconsistent. I'm positive that this has the potential to one-shot Malaketh if you catch it right. However, as you can see here, sometimes it's hitting for a thousand, and other times double that, just based on positioning. Regardless, 
it's a relatively easy fight if you just punish that slow 1-2 combo, as usual. Now for the Ashen Capital. So Lightning Strike is never 100% consistent, but one way to make it a bit better for smaller enemies is to charge it fully. Run up to Gideon and do a fully charged one. Finally managed to one-shot him. Favourite build ever. On a serious note, it is worth spamming it after the initial charged attack as I tried this a few times, and most of the time, you won't get that one shot. Two always does the trick though. Now for Godfrey and Horalu, who you might think might be a little bit of a nightmare, but I'm gonna let the footage do the talking here. Okay, time for Commander Nile, and check out this as a starting attack. For the rest of the fight, I went with my normal strat of baiting those distance closing attacks, then standing just outside their AoE and casting. It's worth sticking to charged attacks here as they're a little more accurate and you do have the time. Grab the other half of the secret medallion and head through the consecrated snowfield all the way to Ordener Town. We're going to head to the Halig Tree now, so as usual I'm using Ordener Skip. But check out my original faith guide for the light roll strat if this gets patched in the future. Jump on the pillar line up your compass to the right of this notch, then do two jumps with the direction order being one o'clock, seven o'clock. Run through the Halig tree all the way to Loretta. This is a really easy one, much like my original faith guide, just bide your time and wait for opportunities to get a lightning strike in. Head through the rest of the Halig tree and light the grace by Melania. Now in most of my videos this is usually the point where I play some dramatic music and spend two minutes talking you through how to kill her. But this really isn't complicated at all. She won't dodge lightning spear when you cast. So phase one you can keep your distance and chuck them at her. Keep it to one at a time though as she'll do this little dodge after she gets hit, so the second will always miss if you go for it. In phase one, you'll only have to worry about the end of Waterfowl. As usual, three rolls. One o'clock, one o'clock, six o'clock. In phase two, just run away from the clone attack. You have to be more patient in phase two, as she'll close the distance a little quicker. But this fight on this build couldn't be simpler. I'm not saying it's easy, it's Melania, but it's far more a test of patience rather than skill. The next fight, however, will be very, very different. It's time for the biggest problem that I had foreseen in this run. Dragonlord Placidusax. Now, as you will know if you've fought Plassey, Ancient Dragon Lightning spells are kinda his thing. And history tells us, if a boss deals a certain type of damage, they're almost certainly super resistant to it. Renala is almost immune to magic, Melania is almost immune to rot, Elden Beast to holy. So trying to fight this boss who spams Lightning Strike with lightning strike 
is almost certainly going to be the easiest fight in the whole run. I never doubted myself. Easy game. Now it's time to backtrack a little for Astol. So go speak to Rani, grab the Finger Slayer Blade from Nokron, and head through the teleporter at Renner's Rise, through Noxtella and the Lake of Rot, all the way to Astol. Nothing to worry about here. Three strikes should do it, but you might need a fourth if you've got lower damage on some of them. Now into deep root depths for Fierce Champs. Happily, this is another very easy one. You can one-shot the first two summons, then double-tap these nerds as they spawn in. Fortis Axe is pretty easy too. I'd probably say you'd be safer going with uncharged attacks for this fight. There is just enough time for a charged one, but most of the time you'll get interrupted. Now walk back to Ordinar Town and ride southwest to the Mogwin Teleporter. Jump on this ledge to cheese the invader. Yeah, for some reason he has needed a little bit of encouragement recently. I don't know why that is. Head through Mogwin Palace and all the way to Moog. The fight that I desperately wanted here was one where we don't use the purifying tier, we don't use the shackle, and we kill him before Knee Hill. Now with Lightning Strike, I'm certain this is possible. It's just so heavily reliant on his RNG letting you get a strike in, and the attack itself doing maximum damage, that I eventually had to give up on this pursuit for time. If any of you try this build and do manage it though, please send it to me, I'd love to see it. For the easiest Moog fight, I'd advise you go grab the Shackle and use that downtime and extra surface area to get full lightning strikes in for big damage. But since this was a little bit of a challenge run for me, I didn't want to use the Shackle, so instead I did it with lightning spears. The key here is to stay just out of range of his projectiles, then hit him from a distance. Much like Melania, I won't say it's easy, but the extra distance keeps you clear of most of the dangerous stuff. And finally, Radagon and Elden Beast. Now I'll give you two options for Radagon to make it a little more interesting. First up is Lightning Strike. You can hit him with one at the start of the fight, another after the jump attack, and one more after the triple slam. For a very, very easy fight. If you're looking for total and complete satisfaction though, Use Fortis Axe's Remembrance to get his Lightning Spear. Using this for the fight is super satisfying as if timed correctly, you can use its animation to dodge Radagon's attacks as you wind up yours. It took me a fair few tries to beat him like this, but the coolness of the fight overall was worth it in the end. finally for Elden Beast, and as a large enemy he once again falls into the very easy category. Try to get as close to him as possible for your strikes, 
and make sure that you pick your moments. Charged attacks will end the fight very quickly if you get them off right next to him. And that's it. How to beat Elden Ring using nothing but lightning. Yes, yes, okay. Nothing but Serpent Hunter and lightning attacks. If you've made it this far and actually tried this build, please let me know how you got on in the comments. If you've enjoyed this video, give it a like and subscribe to my channel for more Elden Ring build guides. As always, thanks for watching. See you soon.